Hey, this is Grant Miller, founder and CEO of Replicated. So what we're gonna do today is actually walk you through a demo of what does it look like for an enterprise IT admin to install the private instance of an application distributed by Replicated. And to do that, we're gonna show you Coverall's enterprise. So an enterprise customer would come to this landing page, you know, request a free trial, that's gonna generate a license that's uh, generated by the Replicated API. And then the customer's gonna come to these install instructions. The first piece here is to create a Linux server uh, with at least two cores, eight gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of disk space. We did that over here in Google Compute Engine. I'm already SSHing into this host as well. And so, you know, I did a little pre-work just to start that up. The key here is that this whole experience is gonna feel very customized to the Coveralls Enterprise experience. So the first thing I'm gonna do is copy this install script and this install script is actually hosted by replicated and the team of coverall is just proxying it through their servers so now that i'm here i'm ssh into my remote host that's in my data center as the enterprise it admin right so imagine i'm the it admin from some big bank i'm now going to run this install script now you generally might not want to provide a pipe to sudo bash but you know you could have them install this over two instructions download maybe inspect the install script and then run it so the first question we ask is, is there a proxy needed? Replicated supports three different install types. Number one would be just like this server has outbound internet access, doesn't need any kind of inbound access, so it can be on a private network. Also, we support full proxy installs. So if there's a bastion host that needs to be reached in order to actually install the application, we can use that. They just have to configure what that proxy is. And then finally, we actually have support for full air gap installs. I'll show you a little bit of that uh, in a few minutes when we're doing the install process so you can get an understanding of what it would take for an end customer to actually do an air gap install. Generally, we try to keep it pretty simple, make it just a little bit more of a localized version of a actual installer. So what's happening here is Replicated is installing Docker. And if this was a Kubernetes application, it would install Kubernetes so Replicated can use three different schedulers. We've written our own that we've, you know, a lot of our customers still use, kind of simple and easy to use. We also support Swarm and we also support Kubernetes. And so if this was one of those other applications, we'd be provisioning this. This is just a standard Replicated app. What I'm gonna do here is I'm instructed to actually go to this host over HTTPS. I'm gonna go to HTTP just because it's one piece I wanna show really quick. If your customers visit over HTTP, they'll actually get some instructions around how to handle what, what's gonna come next. And so there's this TLS warning. That's because Replicated uses a self-signed certificate to prepare and bootstrap the machine. Basically, we detect the browser and tell you what to do to get past that. So on the next screen, I'm gonna click advanced and then click proceed in order to actually get into setup. I could verify the authenticity of the certificate by running this command, but generally, you know, this is a, and your customers can also place their TLS certs on the, the server beforehand if they don't want to have to deal with having self-signed certs at all. So I'm going to click advanced and then proceed. Great. And now I'm in the admin console. And because we provided those self-signed certs, we instantly provide the customer with the option to actually set up their own DNS and provide the TLS certain key. So I have already set up some DNS for this server. So coveralls.sum bigbank.com and then I'm going to choose my key so I have a key that I generated I actually just generated this through let's encrypt but you could generate them however you want and I could continue on with that self-signed cert if I wanted or I can just click upload and continue I'm gonna upload these great so now we upload the license remember I mentioned that their customers would have requested a license or gotten a license distributed to them from the coveralls team but before we do that, I'll just kind of point out this snapshot and restore feature. Replicated can power the snapshot and restore for any application. Your customers can set these to automatically back up to an S3 bucket daily, hourly, whatever they think, um, or an SFTP server or locally on the, on the same host and then have a separate process to move that on to a backup. We're just going to do a fresh install. So I'm going to install, you see we have two different licenses here, these RLI files. So replicated licenses include what we call entitlements. Different licenses can have different entitlements baked in. In this case, this license is air gap enabled and this license is not. I'll click on the air gap one. 
Because we chose the air gap enabled license, I'm actually given the option to do an air gap install. So let's see what that path would look like. Well, basically, we would have gotten a dot air gap package from the folks at coveralls if we were doing an air gap install. And then we'd, we would just place it in a directory and then identify to the replicated uh, host where that directory is. And then replicated is basically going to monitor that directory for any new dot air gap packages that get placed in there. We'll do an online install instead. Because of this, it actually takes that license and sends it up to the replicated server, validates the authenticity. And then in the background, what you don't see is it's actually starting to download the different containers that actually power the coveralls application. From here, I'm given the option to secure the admin console. I could not put a password on it. Maybe if I have some type of proxy in front of this, I can just put a standard password on it. Or if I really want to, I can actually hook this into my LDAP or Active Directory server, and we'll use that uh, to, to do authentication into the admin console. I'm just going to toss a password on. Great. So this next step is actually really important. So we're running through a series of pre-flight checks. Any customer can provide custom programmable pre-flight checks. In this case, you know, we're checking for things like disk space and the number of cores, uh, the amount of CPU, et cetera, et cetera. But if they wanted to, they could provide a, a programmable pre-flight check, which would actually run a container at this time and then provide the output to the customer. This feature is really important because it makes sure that the resources that your customer provides actually meet all of your requirements. Great. Now for the settings screen. So this screen is basically where you define what customer supplied values you want to collect that you can then use as environment variables to overwrite config files. It's basically the configuration options for your application. We can validate that this DNS resolves. We have some built in things here to use those certificates that we uploaded earlier. This application requires an integration with GitHub. So I'll type my GitHub key in secret. I'm just making these up. Uh, I could then verify we actually run these little checks. So this actually hit the GitHub API. Turns out those are not uh, accurate cred credentials that I just typed in there. You can see a bunch of different options here. One that I'll point out is the option for the enterprise IT admin to actually use an external Postgres database. So the coveralls team includes a Postgres container alongside of their application, which is really useful to get this up and running. But sometimes the enterprise wants to you know, use RDS or a managed service, or maybe they have their own Postgres instance internally that they use for a lot of shared projects. And so they could actually provide that connection string here. And then that containerized version wouldn't be running. We have some other options for SMTP. We'll click save. You can see that uh, it's already pulled all the images. So now it's just starting with these new values. And this should take, you know, another minute or so for the application to get back up and running. Uh, and while we're waiting, I'll point out a few pieces. If I wanted to add an additional host into this cluster, I could just click add node. And then I could type in the pi private IP address 10.10.10.10, select that maybe I want to schedule a worker onto it. And then I would just run this command on a separate host. Pretty simple. And that would just sort of register with this application. And you'd see it here on this dashboard. A couple other key components of the replicated platform from the admin perspective is the support bundle. Basically, the support bundle is used and customized by every one of our vendors who then put in all the different logs and uh, different commands they might want to run if one of their customers is having an issue. This is how they get that information over, you know, over the firewall. How do they communicate what went wrong with the host or what went wrong with the, the server? You know, maybe it ran out of disk space, and that would be obvious here. We also run a full audit log for this on-prem instance just all the activity that's happening here. Um, you can actually send events into this. We host the API for that as well. I mentioned, you know, we can start up snapshots. You can schedule these. Here's some graphs that we embed onto the dashboard. Any application can send any graphs they want here. We run a, a StatsD server. So if you want to send logins or something else, you can. And then here, if I click on open, you'll see that it says it started. And so we can launch into the actual coveralls application, which might still be going through some startup tasks. It looks like it's ready to log in. So if I wanted to, I could log in right now. That's a quick demo of the end user experience for Replicated. In a bit, we can talk about what the actual vendor experience looked like. So stay tuned.